There we go. And welcome into episode 25 of the Avids and Beyond. My name is Todd Emanuele, and I have a very special guest today. Everyone in the Avidverse knows who you are. They do. You're shaking your head no, but they do. Uh, but tell those that don't know who you are, what you do. Well, let me introduce you first. Jasmine Pritchard is here, everyone. Yay. Hi. <laughs> Hi thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for asking. And um, yeah, I mean, I know it's a while ago, but I appreciate it. <laughs> no, it's it's all good. Uh, you're a very busy person, I've learned. And uh, it, it's hard to track you down sometimes. There is that three hour time difference between us, though. So that makes uh, makes That's it tricky. True. So it's middle of the afternoon still over there where you are. And you're yeah. not dealing with any of the smoke from Canada like we are here. For once, no. For we once, right. Because you guys obviously deal with that kind of stuff a lot. Yeah, it's unfortunate because we actually, they call it, you know, there's like fire season here. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is, I've never in my life, I've lived here my entire life and I've never seen anything like this before where, did you ever watch Breaking Bad, the TV show? Mm -mm, I did oh. it, but I, I did see your, I did see Yeah. No, no, but also I experienced it. So I saw some of those memes when it was here too. Cause like, and I saw like, you know, um, pictures and it's, it's, it, yeah, it's orange. Yes, yeah, it's like everything's sepia tone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm yeah. colorblind, so I can't tell you exactly what color it is, but I knew it was weird, and I know I've never seen it before. And it finally started raining today. We haven't had, like, rain at all. Oh, for, wow. it, the only day it rained was the day I went to the Avid Brothers show in yes. Lafayette, <laughs> and it rained all day, of course. That's the yeah. only day we've had rain in, like, a month and a half. So <laughs> at least it's raining now. All right, back to the business at hand. Now, enough fire and smoke talk for now. Uh, Jasmine, yeah. tell us, you know, I, I, I said everyone in the Avidverse knows who you are. I think I think they do. You keep shaking your head. No. Why do you why do you think people don't know who you are? Because I don't know. I mean, like, because I'm like not as active as a lot of people. Um, I I don't know. I feel like I'm a lurker. <laughs> I don't lurker. go to as many shows as people. I mean, like, you know, on the groups and stuff, I see yeah. a lot. I laugh a lot. I react, but I don't post a lot. And I don't go to like as many shows as people do just, be well, one, because like there's, I mean, they're hardly in California and um, I don't travel that much just because of the job and being busy and stuff. But Right. Why is it that they don't go out to California that much? Is it just that it's so far away from them, do you think? I think, I mean, I really take it personally. I think it's a personal issue they have with me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I don't know. I, um, you know, I mean, I know that they do a lot of festivals and, sure. you know, they were here with Willie quite a bunch. And so I think maybe, I mean, but we, but the shows that we do get like are really special, you know, um, we got one where it was like a 600 cap or something at um, wow. the Robert Mond Mondavi Winery. And that was beautiful. Um, and it happened at a time where I was, it was like a couple of days after I had lost like um, a really, really dear friend of mine, a mentor of mine in music, one of my mm. best friends. And I didn't know if I wanted to go. And then I just remembered like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, you love this band and even more so like I love the people who are there. And right. like literally like people were like holding me up as I was sobbing. Um, I think like it's, <laughs> Like you expected in the slow songs, but I think like they started with high stepping or it was like one of like the first songs. <laughs> and when they said like the very last word is love. And usually I'm like smiley when that happens. And that day I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> their, their um, lyrics are amazing though. And healing. Absolutely. You know? And yeah. that, that's like the best thing you did that day was probably go to that show because they probably made you feel at least a little bit better about oh, it. Oh, it absolutely did. It did. I, um, and it was out, you know, it was outdoors. Actually, I, I just realized this too. So I went to North Carolina last year and um, I did that their rescheduled New Year thing, which was like mid-March. Right, right. That's the first and only time I've ever seen the Avett Brothers indoors. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I say really. I've never seen them indoors, but I've only been to two shows. I'm a, I'm a newbie with the concert going, but uh, yeah. how many shows have you been to? Oh man, I should have prepared. I honestly don't know. I, I am like, I did do the database, but I'm always like late to the game. I'm like, oh, I always have to like put them back in. But I know that this year is going to be like my fourth year going to Red Rocks, even though last year was the first time I did to three, uh, the, the three nights. That's cool. And I think I've seen them like three times here, like in the, well, in the Bay Area and then that one in Napa and then with Willie and I don't know. So at least 10 times then. 
between 10 and 15 i think okay that's honestly, that's a great number which yeah which honestly is kind of surprising to me well i think it surprises people when i say i've only been to two shows <laughs> but uh then my my guest a couple weeks ago alex sossler who did the book theology mm -hmm. and the avid brothers has yeah. been to exactly zero shows and really? that that blew my mind when he said that he goes oh because i asked him the same question how many shows have you been to he goes I was hoping he didn't ask me that, <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny the way we, we talked about it and I'm going to have him back on someday when he's been to a show so he can describe yeah. it. Like oh, he wrote, he wrote this yeah. book, uh, helped write this book with other people. Yes. And... I, I ordered it. And actually oh, I told you I, I can't it. wait to read it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, did you know this is going on? And then I asked like, you know, I was like, did Susie know this was going on? He's like, no, what? And so, oh, and thanks. I actually used your code. Oh, nice. That Alex was very nice enough to uh, give that to me to post. So yeah, yeah I, th I think he uh, actually sold quite a few books from from the, the interview on the show, which is nice. And uh, I think he, he was surprised by that a little bit. But uh, oh, that, that was it was a lot of fun talking with him and then making fun of him at the end for never being to a show. Uh, but nothing to be made fun of for, though. Uh, so anyway, let we keep going off time. I knew this was going to happen. This 40 minutes is going to go by so fast and we're never going to get to the stuff that I wanted to talk about. Know? Tell me about you. You're a very interesting person. Like you're, you work in music, you work with Jim Avit and do all kinds of stuff with Jim. Uh, just tell me, tell me about your, a day in the life of Jasmine Pritchard. Um, okay. Well, so I used to work like kind of full time in music and then COVID happened and the events fell off and the video mm. production fell off. But I primarily, my job in music is I teach voice lessons. Oh, nice. I have a roster of over, I think 20 students right now, but I also have a day job right, right now. It's like an office job. So I work in the office like 8.30 to 5.00 and then I teach from 5.30 to 9.30 or, you know, um, Monday through Wednesdays and then all day Saturday. So that's why I don't travel a lot for shows, but um, but I also work I also work um, at a nonprofit venue. It's called the Lost Church. Um, it's uh, and that's actually where I met Jim Avit. Well, the previous version. Now it's in a new location. But um, so I host there and I do uh, like I'm a sound engineer there. How do you have time for that? I oh, because you can pick shifts that you want. Oh, can you? Okay, that's good. Like Thursday through Saturday, if there's like shows and stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I want to say it was either 2016 or 2017. Um, there was, um, like, I needed to go to LA, so I needed to, like, change a shift. And then they're like, oh, can you do this Wednesday? And I never used to work Wednesdays. And I was like, actually, yeah, my students, like, canceled so I can make it. And I went in and I was like, wow, I was like, this is really packed for a Wednesday. And I was like, I was like, oh, I wonder who it is. And actually, I wasn't hosting that night. Um, they had asked me to, I call it beer tending, because I don't I don't drink, so I don't really know anything about mixing things, but I can pour beer and wine. <laughs> and um, so I was like, yeah, I can do that. And um, anyway, it was Jim Avit's show, and I was just flummoxed. I was like, why are all these young hipsters here? <laughs> 70 year old man. I, just, I had no clue who he was. And I was like, Oh, I was like, he has vinyl. And I was like, Okay, cool. You know, but I was um, and um, and some of the people that I met there, I'm still friends with because you know, it's like Avit people, you know, they're um, and that's why they were like, kind of younger, they're Avit Brothers fans, but I, sure. I had no clue. And um, so did you not even know who the Avit Brothers were at that point? <clears throat> or or no. did you? Well, okay, kind of. So uh, like I said, so I have it. So I teach and one of my students grew up in North Carolina and him and his sister are huge Avett Brothers fans. And he sang Laundry Room in one of our lessons. Nice. And um, I have like a little booklet that I use to, um, I say inspiration, but it's like, oh, things I can maybe like plagiarize. No, just kidding. No, but like inspiration <laughs> for my own songwriting. And I remember writing down um, in my notebook, um, Tonight I burned the lyrics because every chorus was your name when he sang that. And I put dash the Almond Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Like just no clue. No It's just one of those brother bands. No big deal. Yeah. No, I just like I just thought that I was like, okay, because he played the guitar. It wasn't like he was, you know, playing along with the track, so he was playing it himself. I had no clue. Right. So um he had uh he had brought 
Okay, yeah, so this was like September 2017. He had brought me to a show. It was my first Ava Brothers show where I didn't know who they were, but I went because he had asked me to go and we were friends and, you know, he's my student. But also the openers were uh, the Milk Carton kids who I loved. And um, so I was like, yeah, I'll do it because I've only seen them in like intimate venues. They're at a stage. And so we were up on the lawn. I was like, okay, Milk Carton kids. And I was like literally kind of like preparing myself to like, let's be interested for Michael, you know? <laughs> and by the end, I was like, oh my God. I was like, why are we on the lawn, you cheapskate? I was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, but- These Almond Brothers are great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, like, but at the time, and and here's actually why. It's nothing about like them or, um, it's, it's more of like, I always say that I work in the music community, not the industry, meaning mm. like, I really love live music, but I like it when I can understand the lyrics. I'm a big like, even now, I don't call myself a songwriter. I'm a lyricist more, um, you know, and so like I love house concerts. I love medium venues, you know, intimate um, venues more than yeah, anything. It sounds yeah. Like. yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I, that's why. I, so I love I like them, but I also was like that was when I was working full time music. I was like. I was hosting events, doing sound engineer, doing video production. I was um, working with a local promoter and I was like the merch girl at everything. Like I was mm. doing like the newsletters, the advances and stuff, or I don't know what you call it, but yeah, but kind of like the, the pre-day stuff. And then day of, I would be there and I'd be like working merch for the artists or, you know, like kind of hospitality type things. Um, that if, sounds like fun though. Oh no, it was sounds amazing. great. But yeah, it's amazing. And um, we ran like a weekly open mic and stuff. So I was like very immersed in like the local music scene. Sure, sure. Um, but also, but we hosted like touring artists and that's why um, John Craigie, I've known him forever, like Glenn Phillips of Toe the Wet Sprocket. Um, I don't know if you know Ramblin' Jack Elliott. Sure, but he's yeah. Like, we've hosted him. He's, he's a firecracker. Um, I love him. <laughs> Uh, John Doe of the punk band, like he used to be with his ex scene, like they're, you know, and so Alejandro Escovedo, like all these kind of like touring artists, um, that's why I know them because whenever they toured California, so I see them like once or twice a year. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah, so I didn't really have a clue who Jim Mavit was. Um, but you know, he's very friendly. Him and Susie introduced themselves to me, and I was like, all right, I was like, I'm going to be back there if you need a drink. And you're like, oh no, we're still setting up. And I was like refilling like the water jug or something. And he like grabs my hand and then he's like, lady, I'll take a Coors Light. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so, and like, I like, you know, went around the bar and I was like, we don't have Coors Light, but I have a Miller Light, you know? And I was like, and also what part of the Appalachia are you from? And then he was like, people out here say Appalachia. And I was like, West Virginia though. Like, <laughs> and he was like, oh, um, you know, North Carolina. And he was like, you know, we he talked cause he had, he used to build bridges, you know, like sure. over yeah. and stuff like that. He used to do the welding and stuff. And so he had like been to like, you know, in the middle of nowhere for most people like West Virginia. And he had heard of where I was from. He knew more. You know, I, moved, I left West Virginia when I was eight. So he kind of like knew the geography more than me. <laughs> um, and then we just kind of talked like through the opener, you know, because so the bar was kind of like in a different room. So we were just kind of talking um, and he he didn't mention who his kids were, he, you know, I, you know, I asked him where he was playing, what he was doing. Um, but he was also in the Navy. And I, so I grew up in the Philippines when I was eight years old, my family moved to the Philippines and I finished college there. Like that's home for me. And he was, so you were Navy. born in West Virginia and went to the Philippines. Is that, that's yeah. the trajectory. Okay. And you ended yeah. up out West. <laughs> Yeah, my dad. Yeah, my dad retired, um, uh, and then so we moved back to the Philippines. But his side of the family, his brothers and sisters, that's a long story. But anyway, um, they they lived here in the Bay Area. Um, so I wasn't supposed to move here, um, but I fell in love with the place and ended up staying. I've been here uh, I, fourteen and a half years. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh wow, I feel old just saying that. But. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so anyway, but no, but he had been to the Philippines because of the Navy and stuff. And so we really just, and, you know, immediately just started like educating me. Um, I was really interested in what he had to say because I have like a minor in um, history. Um, He's and such so, a fascinating guy to listen to. Yeah, yeah, too, yeah. yeah. I, and, um, and I was telling him, you know, like about kind of like updates on the places that he had been to. And so that's honestly like how we became friends and then um 
he gave me his calling card and he was like, yeah, let's keep in touch. I'll, I'll send you those books. And I was like, okay, you know, like just, I'm <laughs> right, sure. Um, I mean, not that I didn't want to, but I just like, didn't really believe it. And then he was like, add me on Facebook. And I was like, okay, I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, Mr. Hip guy. Um, and then like, when I looked him up on Facebook, I was like laughing. I was like, why did 700 people like this person's dinner? Like, you know, like I was just, I, again, like no clue. And, um, like I added him and then we talked, but literally we were talking about books. Right. We were talking about books. And then he told me, he's like, oh, I'm not going to be back for a while, but this is the one I'll send you, da, da, da. And um, yeah, it was like that. And then we started talking about books and then I saw Michael and then I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, it was really interesting. He's from North Carolina. And I was like, I was like, yeah, his name is Jim Mavit. And Michael was like, that's the name of brother dad. And I was like, cool who and then he was like we saw them and i was like oh you mean the almond brothers <laughs> yeah i was like what are you talking about <laughs> their dad's not alive um no so uh and that's, that's cool what, that is so cool know, and that's how it happened and like i i think it was like literally like three weeks after we met when i messaged him i was like dude your whole family's musical you didn't tell me and yeah they, they musical they are that is uh that's a great story. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but that's why I think I told you when you asked me to do this, I was like, sometimes I feel like a fraud because like some of like, you know, the girls and stuff, like when we, when Avit Mail first started and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and I, and I signed up, I'm like, yeah, here's my address. I'll send you some stuff too. They're like, so are you a Scott girl or a Seth girl? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, was like, I don't know which. Like literally, I was like, which one's which? And then the way that I like discovered some of a lot of their songs, really is because like someone would send me something I'd be like this is so cute I wonder what song this is from and then like I'd listen I'm like oh this is a really really good song yeah yeah yeah, yeah I think I knew like two two songs <laughs> so have you gotten to meet them when you go to see Jim and stuff like that or because I know you've recorded things at their house and you do a lot with the, the Patreon you run his Patreon right yeah we co-run it co-run it right um <laughs> No, we, uh, we keep that stuff kind of separate, like, okay. you know, like I don't, because, and honestly, I think that's why, like, I'm able to work with him so well, because, um, like, I didn't really get to know him as, like, Jim Avid. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm just curious if they happen to, like, just be there sometime when you're there and be like, oh, hey, hey, guys. Oh, <laughs> no, so I've only, I've only been there once. Um, oh, okay. And it was like after their house, uh, Jim and Susie's house burned down. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I mean, all of them, we've been in touch like in different um, capacities and they're, you know, they're all very kind. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's it's not necessarily like a part of, you know what I mean? Like a part yeah, of like no, I my get work. It. Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, you work with Jim and uh, you like you said, you didn't even know who they were really when you're talking to him and started this relationship with him. Yeah. That's, that's but, really um, funny. But, but Bonnie is my girl. Um, yeah. Her and I are like, we're like Instagram buds and we, we joke around a lot. It's fun. That's yeah. cool. That's very cool. All right. So the, the big reason you're on this show today is because you wanted to talk about your music. You have an album coming out and a single that you are going to worldwide debut on this show after this interview i'm going to play the first single off of it that you very kindly sent over i listened to it today and it is beautiful beautiful song oh, really so liked much. it a lot um i can't wait for everyone to hear it, and i'm sure you can't wait for people to hear it too tell I me about excited. tell me about this whole mm -hmm. process the album the songs your inspiration all that well um well, actually, so I will say, so the song um, that we're premiering tonight, <laughs> don't mind the sun up, it's the nighttime. <laughs> um, no, the song that we're premiering tonight is called Home, and it's about the fact that, you know, I grew up in different places. Um, I went to international school, so my friends live all over the world, or some of my closest friends are traveling musicians. Um, I took international relations, so I've always seen, like, found myself, like, with homes around the world and uh, that the song is called home and it's kind of about that and um very very lovingly there's a there is a line in the third verse one two three third i think um that says i found home in the songs of carolina and that is like very much um about like jim's music and the avett brothers music but 
like even more so just about the home, which obviously, you know, you've only been to two shows, but everybody knows who you are, mister, because you're very <laughs> active and you're very friendly, but that's just how like so many people are, you know? And so like, I really do feel like I've found a home like in this Ava community. It's that crazy, really right? I mean, I've, I've loved music my whole life. I knew of the Avett brothers a long time ago, but I never listened to them until like three, four years ago. Yeah. And I was just immediately drawn in with the first song that I really paid attention to. What was but your first song? The first song I heard was 10,000 words, actually. Uh, that was the first song I heard. And that what? I need to listen to that. I'm not sure which one that one is. I'm not singing it. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just I was listening to a podcast. And actually, it's the podcast. You know, Dan Zlotnick, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, he uh, wrote the theme song for this guy. So I knew of Dan before I even knew of the Avids. Uh, but so I listened to his podcast and he did an episode on the Avid brothers, played a couple of songs. And I was like, oh, my God, these guys are great. I got to look up their music. And the one of the songs he played was 10,000 words. And I was just hooked immediately. Had no idea that the fan base is the way they are. Yeah. And it is, it is a family I've never seen anything like it, the way that it functions and works. Everyone looks out for each other, takes care of each other. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's an amazing place. It really is. Um. Yeah. Uh, and I think I say that every single episode, but it's it is it's just amazing. No, definitely. Um, Jim added me to it when I first started working with him a little bit more when he was going to do shows out here, because yeah. that's the only thing we just started with. I'm like. So the person who had hosted him that time he was here moved to Alabama. And so he was like, well, I don't have a person in California. And I was like, <laughs> I, <laughs> space I do. I'm like hello, you know, <laughs> um, I was like, I literally worked at the venue you played at. I host house concerts. I was like, I'll be your California person. Um, so it was me and Little, uh, Michelle okay. Little. Yeah, I, I got to meet her a couple weeks ago for the first time. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> She's uh. She's the absolute best. She's amazing. <laughs> She's a riot. That's, that's just my favorite joke. My well, second favorite joke. My first favorite joke is when someone leaves a room. I go like, finally. <laughs> Um, but, uh, no, she's, she's amazing. She's a riot. She is hilarious. And I miss her dearly. It um, was great to finally meet her. I mean, I've interacted with her for two years on Facebook and then to meet someone in person, it was like, we just hugged and it was like, wow, so nice to finally meet you in person. And yeah. Um, so yeah, so Jim added me to the groups and I was kind of like, okay, cool. I'll do like some promo. And then like, after like a week and I was like, oh, like, I was like, I don't know if I should say anything. I was like, these people are so intense. And it wasn't like a judgment on them. I was just again, like, I feel like a fraud. Um, but now like I sing along in almost any song, every go. song I mean, at, they play live. Except 10,000 words, uh, which they have, they don't play often. So that's, that's a, that's a throwback one. Oh, you're just a hipster. You're like, I like the obscure one. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, okay. Hello, we're talking about my music. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. No, I was hijacking my own show here. <laughs> no, no, no. So, um, so I had previously put out three songs. Um, one was called Gift, and that one was that's like on Spotify, and I did like a whole kind of release. This is back in I want to say 2019. Okay. Um. And then one I put out, I wrote for um, my nephew who passed away. And so I put that out on um, World Down Syndrome Day um, and just on Bandcamp. And I was like, pay what you want. It's all going to uh, the Down Syndrome Bay Area Connection. And then the third one I wrote with a friend. Actually, it was like when the wildfires were happening here. Mm. Um, and that one, I we kind of I wrote it in one day he put music to it um and that one I actually put out on Bandcamp as well as kind of like it wasn't really a fundraiser it was just like so when Jim and Susie's um house burned down so many people contacted me and was like what can we do what can we do and I was like Jim's saying nothing Jim's right. saying nothing. like you know they have they have um insurance you know and they're okay but so what I did is kind of like I put that online and I was like it's three dollars or pay whatever you want and I used it to buy um some art supplies for Jim and some like um sewing supplies for Susie more of just like pick-me-ups trying to make their temporary home feel a little bit more like home sure yeah that was yeah. a tough time I'm sure for him yeah. I remember hearing all about it yeah and so the reason why like um is because you know like again I say I work in the music community and I'm just like I've never really wanted to put out um <laughs> my, like music to to make money and I think I'm fortunate that that's 
not even that it's like not my situation, that that's not my calling because I see people, you know, who struggle and stuff because, because that's their calling. They have to put out music. They have to put out, you know, and I admire that and I respect that so much, but music has always just been kind of like an outlet for me. And I enjoy, I enjoy teaching more than performing. Okay. Um, but I thought that now, you know, I had, so I had three songs and I had like one that was unreleased and I had ideas for two more. And um, after COVID and after like not, you know, so I have like asthma, which is why I'm not fully back into the events yet and stuff. So um, and why I have the day job um, other than, you know, liking it as well. But um, I I just decided like it's I want my community back. You know, I haven't been doing open mic anymore. I'm not doing as many shows. Um, I just wanted something to celebrate. And uh, this is actually this is actually Willie Nelson's fault, I will say. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay <laughs> i'll tell you why um he had like this like really like casual flex i saw him uh they did the festival here um like back in october the Avert brothers opened my friend invited me because he was working sound for one of the other bands and um i went and then willie nelson was like yeah so you know i put out an album earlier this year it was my 98th studio album and Man. i did that for my 89th birthday i thought that was cute and i was like oh my God, I'm an underachiever. <laughs> so, like I looked up my birthday. I was like, Ooh, 2023, my birthday next year is going to be a Saturday. And so I just kind of did it. And I told my friend who was doing sound, I was like, if I get two more songs, will you like master my album? And I just started like reaching out to my community. And honestly, that's really what I like wanted. I just wanted to be making music with my friends again. Yeah. And so that led to other opportunities and collaborating again. So it is like a really busy schedule, but it's full of things that I love. And so I have three new, like three songs that I've already put out kind of for different like fundraising Mm -hmm. uh, uh, things and then three new songs. And then so I'm having like a big birthday show on June 24th, Saturday, and um, all of the proceeds, like the CDs, the tickets and everything, I'm splitting it between two organizations. One's for Down Syndrome and then one's for, it's called, they're called SF Center. They work with the LGBTQIA plus um, youth since it's Pride Mm -hmm. Month. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I'm really, you know, I'm really excited about that. And yeah, this song, I mean, I told you what it's about, but it's like, it was the song that kind of made this album feel mine again. That's great. You know, because like the other songs had been like, kind of, I had associated them with different causes. Sure. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, should should I just release these three new ones? But I I wanted the other three to have a home as well. So that's good. So when is the whole album itself coming out? Is it coming out at your birthday party Mm -hmm. on June 24th? All right. Yep, it's the EP release show. And it'll be available everywhere for people to Um, download and purchase? I think so. I don't think it will be available on the 24th. I kind of want to make that special for like oh, okay, my sure. community. Like, but but it will eventually be. I am going to like release it because again, like, I mean, not, not like I'm gatekeeping my own stuff, but I just want it to, I wanted that day to be special because I didn't want to have to worry about like, oh, did it go through on Bandcamp? Because I'm going to be a nervous wreck because I'm actually performing <laughs> with a full band and I was just like, cool. So I might release it like, you know, a couple days after or something. And you're going to perform the song live for me right now, right? <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know you said you didn't want to do that. Sorry, uh, my internet is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, you're cutting in and out. Must be the fire smoke there. I don't know. You're kind of cutting yeah, out <laughs> from New York, right? Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm excited to play it. We're gonna play it right after our interview. We are running out of time here. This go. It's crazy. Forty minutes. It's perfect for my show, but it's not enough time to talk about everything. It it really drives me crazy. Well, unfortunately, uh, but, I will never talk to you again. So this is all you will ever know about me. No, oh, kidding. that's sad. Okay. <laughs> that's so rude. All um, right, goodbye. <laughs> Where's that end meeting button? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so you picked the, the songs for this episode. I always have my guests pick music. And you've got a cool mix of tunes here. One of my favorite new artists that you mentioned that you're you're friendly with is in this list, John Craigie who I absolutely love, uh, not, did not know about him previously. It recently discovered his music. I heard the first song I heard was I am California. And I thought he was just like this folk artist. Then I started listening to his albums. My God, he has such a cool thing going where he mixes comedy in with his amazing yeah. songwriting. And he is just great. Why? Why is he not bigger than he is right now? 
or will he be bigger? He must, he's going to blow up. He you know, I, I think so. I think he's on that trajectory because he is an absolute genius and just like, just a genuinely kind person. Yeah, and he's, cool. yeah, he's hilarious. He like, you have to see him live the next time you have a chance. Like, someone's at the front door. Oh, <laughs> Wait, you have to pause it. Sorry. Pause. One... <laughs> can I pause One recording? Second. Yeah, you can. Okay. Sorry. Go. Okay. All right. I was saying, um, you have to see John Craigie live. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I agree. I want yeah. to. Does he... he come to the East Coast that often? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, he tours every. Yeah, because actually, when I'm at Red Rocks, he will be in Boston. He's doing a Boston thing, oh, and okay. he was supposed. He will, well, he was just there. Um, before he was here, that time when I was talking to you, he was in New York. Like, because he, he was talking about doing like the Woodstock tour. Oh, walking. he was. He was right. Because yeah, I had friends that went to see him in Woodstock, and that's okay. really when I heard about him. Uh, Mike Gans oh, okay. went with to yeah. go see him and they sat like right in the front row and i'm like hmm i gotta check this guy out yeah, yeah, and yeah. i was instantly okay. hooked instantly hooked yeah. so and upset that i didn't go to that show <laughs> i didn't yeah. know about it no he he tours he tours a lot um yeah no but he um i think i told you this like previously but yeah i think like the first time i saw him was for like 10 people wow. and, <laughs> and the thing is like you know he's gotten better and everything but the energy like I don't care if he's playing for 10 people, if he's playing for 10,000, like that man like knows how to command a room and he's just, yeah, it's, it's been really brilliant to watch. All right. So what song of his did you pick for this episode? I picked, um, dissect the bird because I love that song. yeah, I, and I know you don't, I was so happy. Well, part of me, when you shared it, I was like, dang it. I wanted to introduce him to that song. <laughs> also, no, um, I, I listened to every single song he has out there, uh, over the last okay. few weeks. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he um I love this song. I think it captures so much um so much like of what it is to kind of like have kind of like that self-doubt and be uh but basically, you know, uh so it was I think his kindergarten or someone in grade school hit one of his teachers like talked to him um and said that to him, you know, because he was like acting out and he was like kind of like a rambunctious <laughs> dude, I guess. And he said, you know, like um I don't know if they said like you're doing it wrong, but you know, like no matter how you d dissect the bird, you're not going to find a song or something. And that stuck with him. And yeah. It turned into a, that's a really great song. I love that song. Really great song. It's All really right. about focusing on what's important. Very cool. Who else did you pick? I know there's lots of, uh, you said West Coast folks, right? Um, So, okay. The next one is Megan Slankard's What a Way to Fail. Okay. I love this song so much that when I was going to do my own podcast in 2019, I was really like, um. I was a long story behind it, but I was going to interview musicians that I've like known for years, but I've only seen them in one. Like, I'm like, I only know you through this door entrance or in this venue. Hmm. Um, I wanted to get to know them more. Um, but this, this song was called what a way to fail. And uh, my podcast is going to be like, what a way. Um, and I didn't necessarily, cause I didn't want to call it fail. Cause no one would want to <laughs> listen to it, but I wanted to you know hear about how, they made their way into becoming a full-time musician. That was the podcast thing. But um, when I, my songs, I kind of speak directly and like what I'm feeling, that's like the words that I use. Megan Slankard is, first of all, she's one of my best friends and she's so talented and she mixed all the songs except, uh, it, it, no, she co-wrote all of the songs with me except for one. Um, she does background vocals on Home, which we're listening to. Um, this lady has more talent in her pinky finger nail than I can ever think to have. Like, so she she's has... the background singer on your song. Okay. I yes. was going to ask you who that was. Yeah, actually. So if you look in like rejects and stuff, if you look up Jasmine Pritchard and Megan Sanker, we've done a couple of Avid Brothers covers too. Just I will be looking that up later. I know what I'm doing later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but she, she's amazing. Um, she's actually one of like the pioneers of Patreon and, um, uh, she's done like a song a month for, I don't, well, she just hit like a 101 song or something. She wow. produces it all herself, but this song, and she has a new album out. This song is from her album beforehand. It's called What a Way to Fail. Just like the, the bridge of this song is like my favorite bridge of all time. Um, just the way that she writes, um, she's talking about kind of like, you know, our failures and our dreams and stuff, but it's like, about a boat crash <laughs> oh okay yeah i don't know how to ex 
to explain it, if there's a lot of boat terminology, you'll get it, but it's a beautiful song. I can't wait to listen to it. This is why I love having my guests pick music. And I think I say this every episode too, because I always get different stuff that I don't know. And I love listening to new music. And I think it opens other people's eyes to new music too, and different music. So yeah, I appreciate she- this. Well, I appreciate you listening to so much. She's been a little bit under the radar, uh, radar, but she's, you know, she's open for Toad the Wet Sprocket on tour for their, That's like, cool. 20th All right. She's open for Train. Um, wow. You know, she's, okay. she's, yeah, she's played, she's played, like, a bunch of festivals. She's doing My Love Music again in Wisconsin this year. She did it last year. I mean, just amazingly talented human um and yeah I, for anyone listening like i i will preach about her all day and not just because she's one of my best friends but because she's genuinely my favorite songwriter i think hands down wow okay that's that's a, a big sell right there that no pressure <laughs> on everyone liking that song now i can't wait to listen to it i'm excited for that all right what's, what do you have next um so I picked two songs, one by Jim Avett and then t- uh, the second one by the Avett Brothers. And honestly, obviously, there's so many to choose from from both. Yeah. Um, but I actually like I think these two songs are some of like their more um, simple, down to earth kind of lyric centered songs. So mm-hmm. one by Jim is um, Before There Was You. And basically the chorus is like my life is one thing i know is my life is better for for having you in it basically my my life is better with you in it mm-hmm. and then i really like that i have it on the same playlist which is my calming playlist <laughs> as um as better here another great um, song and, uh, Avert brothers and so like i kind of like that it was there it was two songs that are about just like yes my i'm admitting and ready to admit my life is better with you in it and i think that as i grow older as you know like we're being post covid where i think like a lot of people have like let go of just like the shit that doesn't matter you know right. myself included hopefully um i think that like it's just so important you know i lost a lot of people in covid in the philippines and stuff the vaccine didn't get there quick enough and mm just other things over, you know, overpopulation and stuff. But I just think like, it's so important to let the people, anybody who has impacted your life positively to let them know that, you know, that your life is better with them. And so that's why I chose these two songs. That's kind of like the theme. Um, That's what like my album is kind of like centered on is just like the realization of just like, you know, you got, you have to have your people and you have to show up for your people. And so that's why I chose those two songs. I love that. That's, that's, that's great. Um, Did you, you had one more song on there, right? Do you not have your list in front of you or do you? I mean, I have what I can tell you what it is. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Free of free of by um sorry <laughs> sorry br lively um also just like totally underrated musician he's out of like he's from dallas but he's in austin um who i didn't i've known him for a few years now but i didn't know he was an avett brothers fan oh. until i until last year three days before red rocks i was like hey i happen to have an extra ticket on saturday if you want to fly up for the night let me know and he did and then i was like okay well he's like kind of a guy who's like like for adventure and stuff but no he was singing along louder and like to more songs than i was he's like are you kidding i was like how have we never talked about this before, you know? but anyway he was someone that like i met one night and i literally like said to him i was like i'm not ready to say goodbye to you i know you're here for a couple of days like can we just be friends you know and he's like sure and so he actually co-wrote paradise with me which is the song i put out um for when jim and susie's house burned down yeah, yeah. And, um we wrote it in one day um while like we found like this lagoon because the the air was like it is there now yeah and um, we found this lagoon where like the fog was just kind of keeping the air low mm-hmm. so we were on this picnic table and i was so nervous i was like i wrote a song last night um while uh like about that fa- family who had told me that they lost everything in the town called paradise because one of the it was called the campfire and it wiped out the entire town oh gosh and um he was like let me hear it and i was like no i'm too scared because i didn't know him that well yeah. and i like started crying and he was like uh this is beautiful and he put it to music so we wrote it all like in one day wow um, and i wanted people to hear his music because like i was able to be that way with him because he's just so open he's so 
like and uh, his song is called free of and basically it's talking tying into like what I you know said earlier it's like talking about uh, you know, being free of constraints, being free to be yourself. And I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it is in New York, but over here, it's like that post COVID attitude. It's like, you can go one way, you can be like more appreciative, or you can kind of be like, I don't give a crap anymore. It's it's like uh, that here too. I think it's kind of like that everywhere post COVID, yeah. but um, yeah. I, I love your music choices. I can't wait to listen to the, I, I've heard two of them already, Jim, Avid and the Avid Brothers song, of course, but the other ones are new. So I'm excited for that. Um, do you have how much time we have left? Because it normally pops up. We got to be running out here any minute. No, because you're the one recording. So okay. Well, Wait, maybe no, we... no, because this is this is a pro thing. Oh, oh, so there is no time, huh? Mm. There's no time, no time limit. Ooh. But um, are you a poster person? A what person? A poster person. Oh yes, right? I, you kind of cut out there. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I love them. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, this doesn't have to go on the interview, but I did, I wanted to show you a poster and if you want it, it's yours. Uh, okay, sure. Because you like the, because you like the song so much, Dissect the Bird. Um, so every year, Jim, uh, John Craigie comes, um, he calls it the Keep It Warm Tour, where yeah. he does, he does a clothing drive. Like if you bring a coat, you can get like a special poster and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and he, you know, like they distribute it to the uh, those who are houseless. And so I have an extra one because I did his merch one year and um, he gave me an extra one. And uh, I think it will remind you because it is bird themed. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So if you would like this, I will package it up and send it to you. I would absolutely and love that. So um, like every bird has, it has a bird, but it also has like the venue that he played. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. But what sucks is that he played our venue, um, but it was a late ad. So it's actually not on here, but. Um, oh, okay. You can but, draw but, it in. But it, yeah, right. I'll just, I'll, you know, like, that signature. I'm like, no, I drew my own bird. It was, yeah. it was like the M in the painting that we always learned as, as a child, <laughs> um, as children. But yeah, no, but I'm happy to send this to you. I thought I was looking through posters and I was like, that's because, great. Yeah. So I tried all of these. Are, well, I, the Jim Avett one. Um, I opened for, I opened for Jim Avett in 2019. That's cool. Yeah, and actually that's what kind of like, sorry, I know I'm talking a lot, but um, that's what kind of, that was the impetus for me to record some songs because he said that he would come back here and let me host again, but he wanted me to open and he was like, and I want you to play original songs. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I get to sing with Pale Face on this show. <laughs> that's oh. my, that's my musical, uh, that's the beginning and end of my music career. <laughs> But it was fun anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was cool. So I put together like a little band and stuff. And so, but yeah, but all my That's posters awesome. are like same size. So this is big. So I yeah. will, I will take that off your hands if you're willing all to right. send it. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, and we got to get John Craigie on this show somehow. I got to get him on this show. <laughs> I want to, I have so many questions to ask him. Uh, I feel, yeah, I feel like you're going to have to like, spring for the pro man i don't know because i'm gonna have to because it just set like cut it up into two episodes or something like yeah. that but. um yeah so um well yeah i don't want i mean i i told you some of the things that are coming up i don't think like he wants it announced yet so. oh yeah no no don't put it yeah, on here but, no, um, no no but but yeah but I, i'm gonna send that like because I told Phil that I'm like, I'll do it and, you know, like, make sure it's painless, make sure it's cool. And then um, and then I'll I'll send like an intro email with you guys. Very okay. excited. That's cool. I love it. All right. I, I've got to wrap this up, though, because uh, A, that my show will run over and B, I have to go pick up my daughter from dance class right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank well, you. It was so good to talk to you. Yeah, I'm It was so great to have you on again. I have sheets of paper here with questions that I did not get to. So even though you said you're never going to talk to me again, we'll have to have you back on sometime so we could talk more. Sure. I would love that. And um, yeah, but maybe I know that you've had Jim on before too, but um, it would be cool if we did like um, an interview, like when I, cause I'm visiting him later on in the fall, maybe we can do it for Patreon or maybe we can do it for, for this. It would be Let, cool. Let's do it with the three of us. You're saying. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's plan on that. I, I want to get him back on because the first time he was on, we were talking for a half an hour. Now, it's only a 40-minute interview. We talked for a half an hour, and he goes, when are we going to start? I said, 
we started 30 minutes ago. He goes, oh, I hope I didn't offend anyone with what I said. I'm like, yeah, we started when we when I logged on. That's when it started. It was really funny. He's just so easy to talk to. Yeah. And all you have to do is basically say, hi, Jim. And you got a half an hour right there. Yeah. No. And like people laugh at me. I when, I mean, they don't laugh, but they're like, they don't really believe me at first. I'm like, no, like he's legit one of my best friends. Like he's such a nice guy. Like, like, you know, Susie's like, so nice too. Oh yeah. No, I mean like him and Susie know about like my dating life. They know, about, <laughs> like, like, they know about like the coworkers that I'm not fond of. Like they're like, <laughs> they're amazing. but yeah, Jim's like one of my best friends and people are like, what? I'm like, you don't get it. Talk to him once. <laughs> That, yeah, but, well, that's exactly, I get it. I 100% get it. All right, well, Jasmine, thank right. you for coming on my show. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to hear your song and I hope everyone loves it and then uh, can go download it on June 24th when it becomes, or somewhere around there when it becomes yeah. available for everyone thank else. Thank you but. so, so much. Um, and You're yeah, and th thanks for letting me premiere my, my yes. song on here. And it's coming up right now. So stay tuned here to the Avits and Beyond on Rockin' the Suburbs Radio. Thank you, Jasmine.